Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends uh, to this lecture on Mahatma Gandhi and this is second lecture on his thought and today we are going to discuss his views on um, Swaraj, his critique of modern civilization and also his views on passive resistance. So these three themes we will discuss through his uh, seminal work Hindu Swaraj and uh, Hindu Swaraj is the text which he wrote in 1909 and most of his uh, philosophy or political um, uh, philosophy and also uh, the method for attaining political independence, his notion on Swaraj, his views on violence or non-violence is most articulated philosophically in uh, this seminal text of uh, Mahatma Gandhi which remains a very popular text even uh, in contemporary times. So, um, we will discuss his um, um, Hindu Saras, uh, we will situate it in the larger intellectual context in uh, to whom uh, he was responding to and how he articulated his thought on Swaraj, his critique on modern civilization and also um, his views on passive resistance. And uh, in the next lecture that we, we are going to do on Mahatma Gandhi, we will discuss his views on uh, uh, India or India of his dreams and then we will conclude um, his thought by looking at some of the responses that uh, his views and articulation received from many of his contemporaries including Ambedkar, uh, Tagore and many others. So, uh, um, uh, to begin with this text uh, Hindu Saraj or what is called Indian Home Rule, we can begin this lecture by quoting this sentence from Mahatma Gandhi, here he writes that this text which uh, he was writing is not merely a political text or a political book, but it has used the language of politics, but it tried to offer a glimpse of dharma, the moral and the ethical basis of politics which Gandhi emphasized. And we have seen in the previous lecture the search after truth and searching truth through non-violence means remain his lifelong objective. And uh, therefore, in this uh, uh, treatise, he adopted the language of politics, but that adoption is to offer a glimpse of dharma, interpret dharma in the modern context. So, what is the meaning of Hindu Saraj? It means rule of dharma or what he calls Ram Raj. We may read the Gita, the Ramayana or Hindu Saras, but what we have to learn from them is desire for the welfare of others. So, the uh, duty, the focus on the sacrifice or service towards other was deeply embedded in his philosophy of politics or uh, Swaraj or uh, what he uh, characterized as uh, Ram Raja. So, Hindu Saraj in a way while responding to many of the contemporary challenges and discourse was trying to establish the novelty or the originality of his idea of Swaraj and there was lots of confusion about home rule, Swaraj, dominion status in the political public discourse in, Hind in India historically and there he was trying to uh, assert or establish his views of Swaraj which is very uh, uh, different from many other thinkers certainly like um, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Annie Besant or many others who were also fighting for home rule or Swaraj. So, when Gandhi arti uh, was articulating his thought, the Swaraj was a kind of um, uh, cliche, a kind of often 
refer to terms in public political discourse, but of course, it has so many different kinds of interpretation that there was lots of, uh, lots of um, uh, confusion about what is it uh, to attain Swaraj and Gandhi was trying to respond to such public political discourse and establish his uh, meaning of Swaraj. So, um, this text is his seminal work which is originally written in Gujarati in 1909 and published in two installments in Gujarati section of uh, a magazine called Indian Opinion which he edited. And he wrote it in the span of 10 days while he was traveling on board Kildonan Castle while returning from England to South Africa. So, uh, this, uh, uh, this text which he wrote uh, within a span of 10 days. Uh, was uh, uh, proved and still uh, it is regarded as one of the best political philosophical treatises produced by any of the modern uh, modern Indian thinkers in which uh, he also uh, express or exemplify the first wave of uh, anti-colonial thinking or responding or providing a thorough non-western critique to the modern uh, modern civilization or the modern vocabulary of politics, society and also uh, the conception of um, uh, state. So, um, uh, this text of Gandhi remains a very powerful text in so many ways despite of its immediate concern to respond to the confusions around this term Swaraj and how to achieve the Swaraj. He was also stating civilization. Uh, Gujarati, he himself translated into English and no other work of his, not even his autobiography which is my experiment with truth received so much attention as this text has received. Very recently Anthony J. Perel has edited Hindu Swaraj, very recently again Tridip Surud has translated his original Gujarati into English. So, there are multiple interpretation, edition, re-edition of this works which received so much of scholarly attention much after its historical, um, uh, historical uh, context. So, in this text Hindu Saraj or Indian Home Rule, he provides a critique of colonialism and western civilization and it also deals with his theory and practice of non-violence. So, in this text besides responding or clarifying the confusion around this term Swaraj, he was also providing a critique, theoretical critique to the modern western civilization and also he um, uh, compare the violence or the non-violence uh, method of uh, political action or uh, method for political uh, independence um, in India. So, he discussed these theory and practice of uh, non-violence in much detail in the later part of this text. This text is written in a literary genre of dialogue where there is a dialogue between an editor which is Gandhi himself and a reader. Here the reader is representing the Indian school of violence, those who champion or support violence as a legitimate tool or method for attaining political independence and for many of them. Uh, they may or may not like violence, but they justified the violence if it is uh, um, uh, done for the um, uh, greater cause or for the objective of political independence. So, for them the end justifies the means. So, uh, a reader here represent such vice which uh, justifies violence or any means which help in attainment of Swaraj or political independence. And uh, of course, the editor is presenting his own idea which is Gandhi himself responding to so many uh, of misconception or confusion around the use of violence method or the consequences of violent method on India at large. In this text, there is also a dialogue between Indian civilization and modern western civilization, between civilization and its reverse. Between, so, there is a struggle in this text about the translation of civilization in Indian language. So, Gandhi himself used the word Sudharo for civilization and opposite of uh, civilization he calls Kudharo. So, there is a constant dialogue, intellectual theoretical dialogue between 
Indian civilization or the basis of Indian civilization or the violence or the instrumental nature of modern state or modern western uh, civilization which dehumanize individual, which uh, suppress the autonomy of individual and focus only on rights without, uh, without uh, uh, equal emphasis on the duties. So, uh, in this text one can find the dialogue between Indian and Western civ uh, civilization, also civilization and its rivers, between those who see ends as justification of means and those who see means and ends as inviolably related. So, for Gandhi uh, as we have discussed in previous lecture, the means and ends is uh, interconnected and one uh, and purity of both is uh, uh, necessary for creating a society which will enable the individual to attain his or uh, her utmost, uh, utmost freedom. So, for that realization, so in this text which is around 90 pages, he powerfully engages with many of the concerns of modern, uh, modern political um, or philosophical issues. And it is in Hindu Swaraj that we find Gandhiji first announced his on life mission that is uh, to attain Swaraj and to attain Swaraj um, uh, through uh, non-violence means and how a Satyagrahi is a very different uh, kind of uh, volunteer or agent to bring about that Swaraj than say extremist on the one hand or moderates on the other hand. So, moderates uh, believing in the constitutional method or petition were almost ineffective. On the other hand, extremist using or resorting to violence was not uh, uh, as uh, acceptable or uh, not as uh, effective as they, uh, they claim. So, in this uh, text, Gandhi established his uh, lifelong mission for attainment of Swaraj, what does it mean to attain uh, the Swaraj and how one can achieve uh, Swaraj through Satyagraha or non-violence. And he returned to this text time and again throughout his career. He wanted to clarify the meaning of Swaraj through this text. This is the concept that provides the theoretical framework of the book. And this is done by introducing a distinction between Swaraj as self-government or the quest for home rule or the good states. So, that is one concept or the political conception of Swaraj and the Swaraj as self-rule which is one on self, the quest for self improvement or the ability to rule oneself without any external, external forces. This point is very crucial to understand Gandhi's views on Swaraj because he was writing this text in 1909 and at that point of time there was a kind of um, uh, contestation going on within the Indian National Congress between moderates or the extremists on the one hand. There was also uh, Swadeshi movement uh, which, uh, which enabled to think about or uh, uh, within the horizon of possibility to imagine about uh, Swaraj. So, uh, and uh, Gan, uh, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Swaraj is my birthright and I shall have it. Similarly, any patients and many others were thinking, theorizing, expressing their opinion on this notion of Swaraj. So, Gandhi was responding to uh, such, uh, such discourse and debate on Swaraj. So, through this text he was also asserting his perception or his understanding of Swaraj which means basically uh, a kind of distinction between Swaraj merely as a self-government through representation, through consent or what it, uh, it, it was called also as a home rule or a kind of good state or Swaraj as a self-rule which leads to self-improvement, ability to govern oneself. So, Gandhiji emphasized on the other uh, part of uh, Swaraj as well besides political independence. In this book, he also ex expressed his ideas on many concepts like modern civilization, passive resistance, education, machinery, condition of India including railways, doctors and lawyers, etc. So, this book besides engaging with the concept of Swaraj also deals with many other concepts like modern civilization, passive resistance, education, etc. Now, this book is addressed or try to address a mixed audience and this audience is constitutive of the expatriate Indians 
greatly attracted to terrorism and political violence. So, Gandhi ji because of his visit to England or in many other parts like other movements in US or in some, uh, some other uh, nation where expatriate Indians believed in the uh, method of political violence for the attainment of, uh, attainment of Swaraj. Gandhi ji was responding to this section of um, uh, Indians as well. Then he was also responding to the extremists and the moderates of the Indian National Congress. As I was saying, the extremists for them, the use of violence or political violence or direct action and the moderates constitutional or the legal method was almost ineffective. Gandhiji was responding to uh, these two group of Indian National Congress also besides the Indian nation and the English. Now, for Indian nation, Gandhi means ordinary Indians, irrespective of their religious, linguistic, regional or caste differences, as well as the new emerging middle class referred to in the text as doctors, lawyers and the wealthy. So, Gandhiji was meticulous or very clear in terms of differentiating between one section of Indians, which he called emerging middle class, English educated middle class largely participating in Indian National Congress and they themselves were actually votary of modern civilization. So, Gandhiji had problem with this section of society which uh, wanted to make India modern uh, without any uh, Englishman. So, that is a kind of very precise response to different sections of uh, uh, audience of uh, this book. And the English for him means both the English British ruling class living in India and the Britishers living in Great Britain. Here it is also perhaps important to note that the British in India and British opinion in England was not often uh, same. And Gandhiji through use of media or the global media was actually able to present the view or concerns of India to the British opinion and sometimes garner the support of British opinion for his political uh, political cause. So, this book tries to address a kind of mixed audience of different sections, different groups or different nationalities also. He uh, believed that through Hindu Suraj, he would be able to give Indians a practical philosophy, the practical philosophy of non-violence or Satyagraha, an updated conception of Dharma that would fit them for the life in the modern world. So, the challenges of modern world, how India by resorting to its own civilizational heritage or civilizational ethos can, uh, can reinterpret dharma and uh, fit in a way which respond or solve many of the challenges of the uh, modern world. And he thought of uh, Hindu Saraj as a text which can give the practical philosophy for such reinterpretation of dharma. Now, to discuss his critique of uh, modern civilization, he considered the colonialism as the result of uh, modern civilization and without critiquing or without challenging the root, you cannot really challenge the, um, uh, the outcome of uh, such, uh, such uh, civilization. So, for, um, um, for uh, so this quote if we uh, discuss that it is not the British that are responsible for the misfortunes of India, but we who have succumbed to modern civilization. So, for him Swaraj is in our palm and we can have it as and when we assert our independence and realize our capability to govern ourselves and start non-cooperating with the, with the uh, colonial, uh, colonial rule. So, uh, he believes that the uh, misfortunes of India is not because of the British or the colonial rule, but because of our submission, because we have succumbed to the captivating effect of modern civilization. So, he has a very fascinating debate with the reader in this text where he said Ki, we do not want uh, Britain and we hate them, we hate the British, but we do not hate the British rule or the nature of the British uh, British administration. So, he make a analogy between we want the British system of rule without the Britishers as if we want um, to have a nature of tiger without, without a tiger. Uh, so, such a powerful 
uh, through such powerful analogy Gandhi was trying to present or um, uh, express the, uh, the uh, bankruptcy or the hollowness of the promises of modern civilization and without challenging the root cause of this problem of colonial rule or Indian misfortunes which is modern civilization, one cannot realize Swaraj, one cannot attain Swaraj. So, this modern civilization forms the broad historical context of Hind Swaraj, the text. Its critique of that civilization is one of the main contribution of modern politicalists and perhaps the original contribution um, uh, from the non-Western uh, perspective towards the many of the ills or challenges of uh, uh, modern society as a result of modern uh, um, uh, civilization. According to Gandhi, modern civilization posed a greater threat to Indians than the colonialism. And there is a very good analogy between this method of resistance to the oppressor. Uh, in many uh, political social movements, it has been seen that one, when one oppose the other, one do not really, uh, does not really challenge the nature of the other. So, the more we oppose other, we become more like the other. Gandhiji was challenging to such political activities and political discourse and in a way expanding the horizon of politics and interpreting it in his own unique way based on many of the cultural or civilizational heritage, uh, heritage of uh, heritage of India. So, um, so uh, he wanted Indians to develop their own identity, their, develop their own, uh, own uh, character based on their own uh, historical or civilizational resources and not really uh, by imitating or blindly imitating the methods and tools of modern western civilization and he thought and he expressed it that the uh, ills that modern civilization has done to the country in which it emerged, say England or in uh, Europe, the consequences was worse. But when it is imitated in a context like India, its capacity to do harm is, is infinite. So, one cannot imagine the, uh, the misery or the misfortune that, uh, that modern civilization and its practices can unleash to Indians if it is blindly imitated. So, Gandhiji was very firm, very clear in his intellectual or theoretical response to the uh, critique of um, uh, modern civilization and its potentiality to do harm or to uh, dehumanize the individual. He expressed his fear because Indians accepted modern civilization as many Indians were follower or in a way believer in the promises which for many was a more hollow promises of modern civilization as a blessing and colonialism as an evil, forgetting that colonialism itself was the product of modern civilization which Gandhi was trying to assert. In Hind Swaraj, Gandhiji very strongly criticized modern civilization which sometimes mislead the reader. So, what is the alternative to modern civilization and such kind of question? But however, it is important to note that his attitude toward modern civilization, though critical, is not wholly negative. He also welcomes some of the positive uh, contribution of modern civilization such as civil liberty, equality, rights, prospects for improving the economic condition of life, liberation of women from tradition and religious toleration. So, some of the positive contribution of modern civilization Gandhiji acknowledged. So, he do not merely have the negative uh, uh, views on modern civilization, but this Acknowledgement is based on certain conditionalities and these conditionality is that there has to be a kind of harmony with Swaraj. So, liberty has to harmonize with Swaraj, rights with duties, empirical knowledge with moral insights, economic development with spiritual progress, religious toleration with religious belief. So, Gandhiji has a very different politics where the use of religion is permissible, in fact desirable and he want uh, religious teaching to be done for the development of mor moral and ethical side of individual uh, character. But this conception of religion is very different from the say, secular uh, divide between religion and politics in modern, uh, modern West and also many uh, such debates in India. So, he uh, wanted religious toleration with religious 
belief and women's liberation with the demands of a broad broader conception of humanity. So, he was trying to accommodate or acknowledge the uh, positive uh, contribution of uh, modern uh, civilization, but at the same time it has to harmonize with many of the uh, neglected or in a way uh, secondary uh, or marginalized aspect of uh, modern civilization as well. In his own definition of civilization, for Gandhiji, civilization is that mode of conduct which points out to the man the path of duty and performance of duty and observance of morality are convertible terms. To observe morality is to attain mastery over our mind, our passion, so doing we know ourselves. So, the whole purpose of civilization is to enable the man to realize his ethical and moral side and know himself better and that uh, will be possible when the men follow the path of duty and not necessarily the discourse on rights and care more and more about his rights forgetting the rule of duty. And therefore, Gandhiji criticizes many or almost every aspect of modern civilization such as machinery, big machinery, certainly profession of doctors and hospitals, lawyers, railways which takes man from his own nature. So, takes away uh, the man from his immediate physical, moral or ethical um, um, embeddedness or the context. So, although in Gandhiji we find that he was critical of machinery, but never said that he was against machines or technology per se and he used charkha a kind of machine as a tool for salvation. He argued that he had problem with the craze behind machinery that is shown everywhere in modern life. Their use must be guided by a well considered moral theory indicating how man should live. Increasing use of machinery and technology led to unemployment in very large measure. And to quote Mahatma Gandhi, he said that modern men or individual have become slave to the mod, uh, machinery or the uh, technology and forget the blissful or the broader, uh, uh, broader side of his individual self. So, he writes, today machinery merely helps a few to ride on the back of millions. So, concentration of wealth, concentration of power, concentration of resources which enables the few to ride on the back of millions and that is possible through the use of machinery, through the use of technology. So, the impetus behind it all is not the philanthropy to save labor. So, the use of technology or machine is also to save the labor. But Gandhiji denies that intention in his use of technology, but the greed to maximize the profit, to maximize the resources or concentrate the resources is the larger motive behind the use of big machinery. So, it is against this constitution of things that I am fighting with all my might. The supreme consideration is man. For Gandhiji, the autonomy of individual is supreme than anything else and he considers the root of all prosperity and progress is the individuality and that has to be uh, nurtured uh, or enabled to attain according to its own, um, own will or according to its own uh, perception or belief, uh, uh, belief system. So, machine should not tend to atrophy the limbs of man. So, uh, machine in that sense enables the few to control and ride over the millions and that uh, uh, restrict the individual self to realize his or her uh, potential the way he or she will like to. So, uh, Gandhi ji intended to provide the minimum basic needs to each and every one. If the machine can do so then, if the machine can do so, then it is to be accepted. So, Gandhi ji was not totally against the use of machine. If it helps everyone to achieve its basic needs, then it is acceptable. Otherwise, it should be regarded as a curse to the society because it leads to empowerment of few over the millions. He also said, I would rule out all machinery even as I would reject this body which is not help to salvation. So, the objective, the ideals of individual life to attain salvation, attain um, um, uh, uh, salvation or freedom uh, in, um, in a sense which uh, is autonomous, which is self uh, uh, self rule. So, the physical body for Gandhi is not as important as the salvation of the soul 
or the realization of the self. So, from that point of view, I would reject all machinery, but machines will remain because like the body. So, the aim and objective of life is to attain salvation, but body is necessary, uh, it is inevitable. Similarly, machines are inevitable. The body itself, as I told you, is the purest piece of mechanism. But if it is a hindrance to the highest fight of the soul, it has to be rejected. So, from bodily comfort, the, which is emphasized by the modern techniques and tools, Gandhiji was focusing towards the realization of the soul, salvation of the soul as the more, uh, more uh, desirable objective rather than submitting or becoming slave of the modern machinery. He argued that a proper civilization placed man at its center. So, for him the man, the individual is at the center. So, for Gandhiji the proper civilization placed man at the center and measure its greatness in terms of its ability to produce man and woman possessing such distinctively human powers as self-determination, autonomy, self-knowledge, self-discipline and social cooperation. So, this is the essential characteristic of human being. So, for Gandhiji civilization is something which train the men and women to realize and develop such characteristic. However, modern civilization did the opposite. By encouraging them to subject their powers to the large organization, to the big machines or experts, it rendered men passive and helpless. So, the big machines, big tools, big industries leads to more concentration and render millions and millions of masses to uh, the position of helpless condition. So, therefore, Gandhiji was very critical of modern civilization. Gandhiji is not criticizing either doctors or lawyers, though apparently it appears so, but Gandhi had a problem with the narrow and limited nature of these professions. And these professions are the tool of domination and suppression of man against man. And about lawyers, he said, all I am concerned is to show that the profession teaches immorality. It is exposed to temptation from which few are saved. So, it is not about providing justice but more about acquiring more and more wealth and that does not lead to uh, the justice or uh, serve the justice. And therefore, modern lawyers or the doctors or the hospitals, even the parliament, railways or the aeroplane, Gandhiji was very critical of because it does not help in realization of the self-rule or the autonomy of the individual. It does not help uh, the individual to realize or to focus equally on this uh, on the soul and Gandhiji was critical of modern doctors or the practitioners of medicine because of their killing of a number of uh, animals uh, before it can be applied to the human uh, human self or human uh, human soul. So, to save one, uh, one uh, life it permit the killing of uh, hundreds and uh, thousands of other species life be it animals and so Gandhiji was very critical of such medical practices as well which does not really help in uh, realization of the soul force or the uh, uh, vitality of the soul in the human personality not just the body or the bodily cure but the cure of the soul and no medicine no doctor can really uh, think about curing the soul uh, or the challenges of the soul then and they focus merely on the bodily sickness or bodily injury. So, Gandhiji said that the profession of lawyers and doctors are corrupting the moral and the human influences in modern society. Gandhi also regarded violence as an un-Indian, something which is alien to Indian civilization and he makes this opinion very clearly in Hindu Swaraj. Gandhi mentioned that Hindu Swaraj was written in order to show that his countrymen were following a suicidal policy of violence. So, from 1907, there was increasing tendency to use violence as a political tool for uh, liberation. And Gandhiji considered it as a kind of suicidal policy and that if they revert to their own glorious civilization, either the English would adopt the latter and becomes Indianized or find their occupation in India gone. So, for Gandhi, the Swaraj and attainment of Swaraj in, in the palms of hand. In uh, English are the English men are there because we want them to be here. When we realize and we resort to our own civilizational values or our own self-belief to govern ourselves and is, is stop cooperating with the colonial rule, either they have to Indianize themselves 
and they will be welcomed or they will uh, uh, go from India on their own volition. So, there is no, no uh, need to use, uh, use violence to realize Swaraj or to attain Swaraj. So, in Hindu Swaraj, Gandhiji also very clearly establishes the spiritual and the moral superiority of Indian society or civilization and the violent and politically corrupt nature of European states and asserted the superiority of the former. So, for Gandhiji, Indians, uh, if they realize uh, the uh, true ethos or the true cultural um, uh, resources of uh, Indian civilization, then it may not need to learn from others, but others can learn from India, including the British, if they want to live and reside in India, can learn uh, these ethos, Indianize themselves, and then they can be welcomed as many other community can be welcomed in India. So, while condemning the brute force of the Western power, Gandhiji distances himself from the militant nationalist for their support of violence, which he considered as a suicidal strategy, as it would provoke and organize violence by ruling authority. And this he further used in many of the political movements he, uh, he launched in India, be it um, uh, non-cooperation, um, civil disobedience, or uh, quit India movement. So, uh, this text he wrote in 1909 before he started any of his major political programs in India and provided a kind of uh, transformative leadership to the whole struggle of independence and to a great extent tamed the militant or the violent uh, uh, side or aspect of Indian political, uh, political struggle. Now, to discuss very briefly his views on passive resistance, which is uh, often uh, regarded as a weapon for the weak or the coward, Gandhiji has a very contrary views about the passive resistance as a method for political or social goals. For Gandhiji, the passive resistance exemplify the force of love, which is the far more stronger force than the force of brute or the physical uh, physical force. It is me the method of securing rights by personal suffering. So, sacrificing yourself for the realization of the goal. And that form of sacrifice without resorting to violence and doing harm or injury to uh, the opponent or the other is the highest form of resistance for uh, Gandhiji which he articulates through this idea of passive resistance. Of course, it was a kind of unique experiment in the political movement. In many anti-colonial struggles, the use of violence was um, uh, followed by many, uh, many coloni uh, colonized subjects and their leaderships. But Gandhiji experimented with this idea of uh, uh, non-violence and non-violence as an effective tool to uh, realize not just the freedom, but also to create a society which is based on love, which is based on uh, true compassion and which enables the individual um, uh, uh, creativity or uh, greatness uh, uh, in individual and also in community. So, he wanted to sacrifice self when the law is unacceptable to one's conscience. So, the force of soul conscience is something which Gandhiji refers to again and again. And in that case, he prefers to accept the penalty. So, the guerrilla method or any other form of political method was unacceptable to Gandhiji because for him, the Satyagrahi is someone who sacrifices himself, do not accept any laws which is contrary to his or her conscience and yet ready to face the consequences for such breach or such uh, resistance to the law which is unjust. So, passive resistance involves the sacrifice of the self and he considers it superior than the sacrifice of others for the cause of political goal. So, from this quotation, we can perhaps better understand his views on the fearlessness or the strength of his Satyagrahi, where he writes that where in courage required in blowing others to pieces from behind a cannon or a smiling face to approach a cannon and be blown to pieces, who is the true warriors? He who keeps death always as a bosom friend or he who controls the death of others. Believe me that a man devoid of courage and manhood can never be a passive resister. So, Gandhiji, the fearlessness is something which is absolutely necessary for a passive resister or a satyagrahi. So, for him, this tool of passive resistance is an all-sided sword 
it can be used anyhow. It blesses him who uses it because of the ethical, moral or soul force and him against whom it is used. And Gandhiji has successfully experimented with this idea of passive resistance throughout the freedom struggle in India. And this passive resistance without drawing a drop of blood produces the far reaching, uh, far -reaching uh, uh, results um, to create a society which is more human, more compassionate and the individual realizes his true or her true potentiality according to his or his or her own volition. So, according to Gandhiji, real home rule is possible only where passive resistance is the guiding force of the people. Any other rule is the foreign rule. So, for Gandhiji in India or in any society, the home rule or Swaraj is possible when passive resistance is the guiding force or any method, violence or any other guerrilla or whatever is foreign rule. And according to him, passive resistors must observe these four practices that is perfect chastity, adopt poverty, follow truth and cultivate fearlessness and he himself experimented with many of these practices in, in his life. So, um, what we find in Gandhiji uh, is that he was a critical of modern western system of education for much of what it stood for. He felt that it was wholly unsuited to India's needs and was a bad copy of the western model which focused more on material possession or the economic political side of human life and very less and less about the moral and ethical side of individual and community lives. Uh, so, however, it would be erroneous to think that Gandhiji rejected ideas from the modern West and remained uninfluenced by it altogether. As we have seen in the first lecture, many of his influence comes from many Western, uh, Western writers and he was aware that there were elements in modern civilization like democratic political philosophy and some other elements which we have just discussed can be useful to India. And in the preface to English edition of Hindu Swaraj, he even urged his countrymen to adopt such positive aspects of modern civilization to drive out the English. So, Gandhiji has a kind of uh, um, dual engagement with the modern uh, civilization and modern waste where he is not someone narrowly limited to his own culture or civilizational heritage, but accommodative of the views which is more suitable, more conducive in uh, helping his own countrymen, he is willing to accept that as well. So, he was not totally against the modern civilization, but he had a deep suspicion of the material progress in the West and its conception of modernity, because uh, he uh, realizes that modern civilization uh, render individual helpless, suppress his autonomy and creativity, which is the uh, basis for all progress according to Gandhiji and therefore, he remain a kind of sus uh, suspicious, deeply suspicious of the many promises of modern civilization and he was dead against its blind imitation in Indian context. So, his views on uh, Hindu Saraj or critique of modern civilization, you can follow some of these texts which is Gandhiji himself wrote his original work Hindu Swaraj or Indian Home Rule, then Hindu Swaraj and other writings by Anthony J. Parrell. You can also look at Cambry's companion to Gandhi and uh, Political Thought in Modern India and Makers of Modern India by Ramchandra Guha. And also in this text, you have a chapter on Mahatma Gandhi, which is also very useful. So, that is all for uh, uh, today's lecture on Gandhiji's views on modern civilization and Hindu Swaraj and in next lecture we are going to discuss his views on um, uh, his vision of uh, India and some of the responses that he receives from his contemporaries. So, thanks for uh, listening and let us know what you think about uh, this lecture. Thank you.